What's up, guys? Uh, welcome to Connect Church. We're so glad that you're tuning in online and just uh, being a part of this Sunday morning service. Uh, to my church family and friends, man, I just want to tell you, I uh, miss you like crazy. I cannot be, wait to be with you again in this building, and I'm hoping that is sooner than later. Um, man, as we get started today, uh, just two quick reminders for you. Uh, don't forget to check in right where you're at. Uh, take a family selfie. Take a selfie with the family pet, whatever that may be, a da uh, dog, a cat, whatever, whatever you're into. You like snakes. I guess you could take one with your snake for you weirdos out there. No, I'm teasing. But uh, man, take a selfie, take a selfie, check in, uh, just to sh show the world what you're doing and uh, help us reach the people of Lewis and Auburn with the good news of the gospel. Share the link, send it out there. Um, number two, the other thing uh, is for our church family, man, I just want to remember uh, your, your generosity makes a difference. Uh, your support financially, giving 10% of uh, God's money back to him, uh, back to the kingdom, back to eternity, man, there's no greater privilege and uh, there's no greater cause. And so just want to remind you to stay faithful in that. And uh, speaking of which, Connect Church, we put out a challenge to our members uh, just about a week and a half ago. And we said, uh, for anybody that wants to tithe on their stimulus check, we think it's a, a good idea. We think it's a, a biblical idea, right? Um, but for anybody that wants to tithe on that check, if you'll give 10% of that, and if you will PayPal that to us and mark it stimulus, or if you want to send it uh, as a check in the mail, uh, you can send it to 263 Turner Street in Auburn, Maine, 04210. And uh, if you just mark that stimulus and, and, and let us know that that's what that is, man, we're going to take 100% of everything that comes in and we are sending it back out into our community in Lewis and Auburn. Uh, we're going to use it to help some families who are uh, hurting from COVID that are directly affected by it, maybe lost a job, maybe lost hours, uh, people that are in need. And uh, we're going to use the rest of it and we're going to send it into our two biggest local hospitals, St. Mary's and CMMC. And we're going to just like love on the people there, on, on the people who are working with COVID every single day. Because um, how many know, man, it's, it's dangerous. The, the longer you're around it, they're saying the worse you get it. And so, man, we just, we want to love those people. We want to thank them for what they do. And uh, we're just going to use all the money we have to do that. And so far we've raised just over $2,300 because of you guys. And so, uh, man, that's something to be excited about. We're pumped to bless our community. And uh, if you haven't been a part of that, man, I want to encourage you, jump on. Uh, Go to connectchurchla.com. You can click the Give tab. It'll take you directly to PayPal. And, and under PayPal in the notes, you can just write Stimulus. Uh, you can give that way. It's encrypted. It's secure. There's nothing to be nervous about. Uh, super safe. And so those are my two things. And uh, let's just jump right into the Word this morning. So let me pray real quick. Father, I thank you. Um, God, I thank you for your people. I thank you for their generosity. And I thank you, God, that even in such a, a strange position that we're in, in the world right now. God, I thank you that in spite of it, God, you're still good and you're still worthy. And uh, God, you are just still pouring out blessing all over the place. And God, we're so excited for who you are and just have this opportunity to share with our friends and our family and our neighbors. And so God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for what you're going to do today. In Jesus name. Amen. Um, if you're like me, you may feel a little bit emotionally disoriented the world's a little different right now, right? You may be a little bit uh, emotionally disoriented and maybe it's kind of obvious, but the, the normal rhythms and routines of life, man, they've really been just kind of like disrupted, right? They've just kind of been disrupted and you've probably noticed by now that it seems like everywhere you go, man, there's tension in the air. There's tension every place you go and events are canceled. Uh, the grocery stores, man, they're full of people and not so much food. Um, Maybe your kids, maybe you're home with them for the very first time. And at first you thought, man, this is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm so excited. I got this vacation and I'm so excited to spend time with my family. But now your kids are starting to get on your nerves and you're debating whether you could give one away for some toilet paper and uh, so, so, some, some hand sanitizer, right? But uh, man, I, I don't know, right? I don't know how you're feeling. I don't know what you're going through. But uh, what I do know is we're all in kind of a similar sort of situation, right? And uh, there is nothing normal about the position that we're in as a world right now. And sadly, the reality is that a lot of people have lost their retirement funds, right? The, the stock market, it's become unpredictable. We see businesses closing. There's families struggling. There are older churches that are hurting because they don't have online giving. They don't have live streaming abilities. And man, the, the economic uh, concerns are, are massive, right? Like it's on a global scale. I mean, this thing is huge. And so... Man, some of you, you might be in a really difficult spot right now. Some of you, maybe you're sick. 
maybe even like life-threatening sick. And some of you, maybe you're worried about loved ones, right? Maybe, maybe you perhaps are working less hours than you might like to, right? Maybe they cut your hours back or you had a job that you once loved and now all of a sudden you don't have that job anymore. Man, there's pain. That's a lot of uncertainty. And man, the bills might be mounting and your marriage might be struggling. And because of everything that we're going through, we're calling today's message, man, when you, when you feel anxious, alone, and afraid. We're calling it when you feel anxious, alone, and afraid. And so if you feel some anxiety, man, this message is for you. If you feel alone or if you're consumed with fear, man, I want to encourage you just to stick around. Don't, don't get out of this thing. Don't, don't walk away. Don't start doing something else, but stick around. I saw an online uh, conversation recently, and it was a conversation between this single mother and, and this other lady, and uh, this single mom, she was online, and, and she was just kind of venting, if you will, right? And the single mom, she's talking really openly, and she says, man, I lost my job. I'm stressed out. I'm hurting. I'm, she's just being honest. She's letting it all out there, right? Stressed. And the other person who's obviously a Christian and a, a nice lady, it was, it, it was sweet and she had the best of intentions, but uh, this other person, she was trying to encourage this single mom and she said, man, just, just trust in the Lord, right? Just trust in the Lord, just trust in God, just trust in Him, right? And that's what she said to her. And the single mom, she kind of talked back. You could tell she was a little bit irritated and she said, I'm trying to, right? I'm trying to trust God, like I'm trying to trust Him, but how do I do it? Right? How do I do it? Like, how am I supposed to trust God when there's no paycheck? How am I supposed to trust God when there's bills to pay? How am I supposed to trust God when I get kids at home and uh, mouths to feed, man? How in the world am I supposed to trust God in a time like this? I really felt for this single mom because, man, the reality is it's really easy to tell somebody else to trust in God and not really trust in Him yourself, right? It's really easy to try to tell somebody else that, right? I mean, you ever hear the, uh, the joke about the, the major surgery and the minor surgery, right? Well, what's the difference in a mi minor surgery and a major surgery? A minor surgery is whatever you're having, and a major surgery is whatever I'm having, right? Right, that's kind of the idea. It's the same kind of concept, right? If you're having it, then hey, God's got you, brother. This is a routine surgery. He's under control. God, we just pray that you guide the doctor's hands, and it's all good, right? You don't really think about it too much after that because it's normal. It's okay. It's a minor surgery, but the moment we are having surgery, right? You remove my ingrown toenail. It's major, right? It's a major thing. And that's kind of what it's like, man. That's a little bit what it's like trying to, trying to trust God. It's really easy to tell somebody else, hey, just trust in the Lord. Just trust in the Lord. But when you don't have a paycheck, when you don't have a paycheck and when it's your turn to battle depression, when you feel alone and when you feel like everything that you thought was stable is now unstable, how? Like how? How do we practically, how do we practically trust God in that moment? How do we trust Him in that moment? How do you trust God when your marriage feels so fragile? How do you trust God when your kids are rebelling? How do you trust God when somebody that you love is vulnerable and really, really sick? How do you trust them when your job is unstable or you get downsized out of your company? Man, how do you trust God when you're so concerned about what's going to happen in the future? I heard one person say, man, how do you trust God when the entire world is running out of toilet paper, but the poo-poo isn't slowing down, right? <laughs> the answer is continue using wisdom and praise God it's against a lot of shake hands, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. But listen... Anytime life is painful, anytime life is painful, anytime you're anxious, anytime you feel alone or afraid, man, what, what I personally do is I like to spend some time reading the scriptures. I like to spend some time in the word. I like to especially read through the book of Psalms because there's just, there's so much in there and there's just something about reading God's truth, right? His comforting words in the book of Psalms that just bring this incredible peace to my weary soul. And so, what I want to do today is I want to show you a few different portions from the book of Psalms. And uh, Psalms is just kind of going to be the one book that we're just going to focus on for today. And I'm praying that we would learn both practically, uh, practically and spiritually how to trust in God. How to trust in God. So here's the question. How do we trust in the Lord? How do we trust 
in the Lord? How do we trust in God? Well, let's start with the words of David in Psalm chapter 9, verse 9 and 10. And David says this. I hope it'll build your faith. He says, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. Man, if you're hurting, if you're feeling alone, if you feel oppressed, man, the Lord, He's a refuge for you. He's a refuge for you. David says, He's a stronghold in times of trouble. He's a stronghold in times of trouble. And then the scripture says this. It says, those, God, who know your name, they trust in you. Those, God, who know your name, they trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name trust you. Which makes complete sense, right? Because you probably don't trust somebody you don't know. You probably don't trust somebody when you don't know their name, right? Like if you don't know somebody's name, then you probably don't have a whole lot of trust for them. You haven't spent time together. You don't know each other well. You don't know if they're trustworthy, right? Those who know your name, trust you, Lord. Those who know your name, trust you, Lord. So the question is, what is God's name? What is God's name? Maybe that's confusing. So let me ask you a question. What do you call God? What do you call God? What is God's name? I heard a comedian say a while back, man, it wasn't until I was about 23 years old when I finally realized that God's last name didn't start with a D and end with slam it. <laughs> right? How many know that is not God's last name? So what is God's name? What is his name? What do you call God? Those who know his name trust in the Lord. So what is his name? What do you call God? What do you call him? Here's another question. Why does it matter? Why does it matter? Well, I'm glad you asked. What you call someone matters because what you call someone tells us a lot about the relationship that you have with them, right? Think about this for a minute, man. When what we call someone, it tells us a whole lot about our relationship with them. What we call someone tells us a lot about the relationship. So for example, my best friend, my wife, Lindsay, I call her Linz, right? That's one of her names. I call her Linz. I call her my bride. I call her the one, my pillar, babe, right? And guess what? None of you ever get to call her any of those things, right? Why? Because there's an intimacy that we know together that we don't know with other people, right? And you don't have that with her. Only I have that with her. And so that's what we have. There's an intimacy in our relationship. And because of that, we have names for each other, right? We call each other certain things no one else will ever call each other. What you call someone tells you so much about the relationship. For example, if I, if I answer my phone and uh, I hear somebody say, hi, is uh, Danielle Johnson there? I know immediately this is somebody who doesn't know me, right? This is somebody who doesn't even know how to say my name, never mind know me, right? They're probably reading my name off a list somewhere. They're probably preparing to sell me something, to scam me out of something, right? There's probably something more taking place. They do not know me. They can't even say my name, right? On the other hand, if I see you in Walmart, maybe I don't know you, but if you look at me and you go, hey, Pastor Dan, I may not know you, but that tells me you know me, right? That tells me you know something about me. You know what I do. And so maybe you go to Connect Church or maybe you've heard me speak online or in somebody else's church or I don't know where you saw me or know me from, but it tells me that you know me even if I don't know you, right? Others call me Daniel. If you call me Daniel, man, chances are we've spent enough time together for you to know that I prefer Daniel over Dan. It's just my preference. I don't care either way, not the end of the world either way, but I prefer if you ask me, I will choose Daniel over Dan. So if you call me Daniel, chances are you know me, right? Chances are you know that about me. You know me more than others probably know me. If you call me Dan, chances are we work together at some point, right? Maybe we went to the same school. Maybe we went to uh, the, a similar function. Maybe we just met each other. We're, we're casual. We we're, we're just kind of acquaintances. And maybe you haven't been around long. Or, and maybe that's just natural for you to call anybody named Daniel Dan because it's such a, a, a common name. And nothing wrong with that. doesn't bother me a bit. Dan is absolutely my name. Totally cool with being called that. Um, but those who know me, those who know my preference, those who have taken some time with me and really know me, they know I prefer Daniel, right? 
And then there's those who call me DJ, right? My name is Daniel Johnson. There's those who call me DJ. And when I hear DJ, I know immediately we have a past together, right? I know immediately that you've been there through it all. I know that you've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. I know that we've had some incredible moments, some great ones and some not so great ones. And I also know that we have been friends for longer than we, and most people could probably ever dream of, right? And if you call me Dano, then I know you've watched me grow. Up close and personal, man, you've been through it all. You've seen it all, your family, your blood, right? If you call me Dano, man, we, we probably share a bond unlike most other people have in this world. Because only the closest of my family members call me that. Only the closest. And that name, it reflects this intimacy that we share. It reflects intimacy. And if you call me daddy, man, there's only one person in the entire world who calls me that. If you call me daddy, man, that means I've prayed with you hundreds of times. That means there's been countless hours spent dreaming of your future and who you will be. That means there's countless hours crying out to God, asking Him to keep His hand on your life. Man, if you call me daddy, it means I am one of the most important people that will ever help to shape your life and who you are. And it means that I've hugged you and kissed you and loved you more than anyone on this planet aside from my own wife. What you call someone tells you so much about the relationship. What you call someone tells you so much. And in the same sense, what you call God directly reflects the intimacy of your relationship with Him. What you call Him directly reflects the intimacy of your relationship with God, right? It shows us how well you know Him. So what do you call God? What do you call God? Man, a lot of people call God the, the big guy in the sky, right? The sugar daddy in the sky, the, the man upstairs, man. If that's what you call God, then chances are you probably don't know Him very well. Right? Chances are there's not much of a relationship there because what you call someone directly reflects the amount of depth in your relationship with them. You know what Jesus called God? Jesus called God Abba. In Aramaic, that means daddy, right? Not just father, but daddy. That was love, right? Father, daddy, papa. Jesus called him father, daddy, right? And that reflected this intimacy that was in their relationship. They had intimacy. And what we call God directly reflects our relationship with God. How well we know Him. David said this, and I want to look at it again in Psalm chapter 9, verse 10. And David, he, he said to God, those who know Your name, they trust in You. God, those who know Your name, they trust in You. So question, how do you grow in your trust to God? How do you grow in your trust to God? Well, let me tell you, you get to know His name. You get to know His name. You get to know His character. Well, what's His name? What's God's name? Man, if you spend some time reading through the Psalms, you will be completely overwhelmed with how, how often David or another psalmist will, will say this about God, but they will always make these statements that say, you are blank, right? You are something, right? It would be this, this attribute, this characteristic, a quality, a metaphor, a title, a name, right? And it would always be, you are something, God, you are something. And so what I want to do is I want to help you to understand the names of God, the characteristics of God, who he is. So who is God? So who is God? Let me tell you who God is. From Psalm 22, verse 19, in one of David's prophetic songs, he said this of God. He said, But you, Lord, do not be far from me. Do not be far from me. And then he said, one of those you are's, like I was just talking about, right? One of those you are statements. And he said, But you, Lord, do not be far from me. And then here's, here's what David said. He said, You, God, are my strength. What are you? You, God, you are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Who are you, God? You're my strength. Who are you? You are my strength, right? Paul said in the New Testament, man, when you're weak, 
Whenever you don't have enough strength, when, whenever you can't do it on your own, when you're vulnerable, when you're hurting, when you're going through it, the Apostle Paul, he said, man, when you're weak, God's strength is made perfect in you. When you're weak, His strength is made perfect in you. In other words, man, every time you have a weakness, uh, you also have an opportunity to experience God's strength, right? You have an ex- opportunity to experience God's strength and His power and His presence. And I feel like I'm speaking to somebody right now because you're hurting, right? You're overwhelmed, man. You've been going through it. You feel like there's just too much. And man, I, I don't know if I can make it another day, right? The news just continues to mount, man. I, I just don't know if we're going to make it. Man, give God your weakness. Give God your weakness. When you give him your weakness, man, God's going to give you his strength because that's who God is. That's what he does. So who is God? God, you're my strength. God, you are my strength. You may be at the end of your strength and you have nothing left. You may feel like you cannot go on for another day. But here's the good news, man. God's your strength. He's your strength. And in your weakness and your vulnerability and your brokenness, man, his strength is made perfect in weakness. That's what the Bible says. His strength is made perfect in weakness. In weakness. It's when you feel like you can't go on. When you feel like you can't face another day, what do we do? We talk to God. We tell him about it, right? We, we give it all over to him. We trust him with it. Because who is God? He's your strength. He is your strength. And those who know his name, they trust in him. God, you're my strength. God, you're my strength. David also said this in another psalm. Psalm 31, verse 5. And David said, man, I entrust my spirit into your hand. Rescue me, Lord. For who are you? He said, for you are faithful, God. For you are faithful, God. God, you are faithful. You're always faithful, right? But the problem is, man, there's very few things in this world that will remain faithful. There's very few things in this world that will stay faithful. We live in a fallen world. By nature, we are naturally sinful. So people, man, you already know, they're going to let you down right? People are going to let you down. Circumstances in your life, they will continue to disappoint you. The economy, man, it may be up or it may be down. And there's going to be times when, man, you're even going to let yourself down. But the good news is, right? The good news is that the New Testament tells us that even when we're faithless, even when we're faithless, even when we're going through it, we just cannot even find a reason to believe. Even when we're faithless, man, God is faithful. God is faithful, Because he can never disown himself. He can never go against his own nature, and that's who he is. And so, who is God? Man, he's faithful. He is faithful. Man, I don't know about you, but I've let God down over and over and over and over again. I've got a trillion times in my life where I've let him down. I've I've failed God so many times, I couldn't possibly count them if I tried. But God's faithfulness has never let me down. It's never let me down. Ready? Man, Who is God? He's faithful. His word is true. He is faithful in every single way. But my question is, do you know God? Do you know who He is? Because these are the names of God. Who is He? Scripture says that you are my strength, God. God, you are my strength. It says, God, you are always faithful. And David says in another psalm, Psalm 65, verse 5, he says, You, God, faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds, O God, our Savior. And look, check this out. Here it is again, right? He said this. He says, God, you are. God, you are. Who are you? God, you are hope. You are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. God, who are you? You are my hope. God, you're my hope. I put my hope in you. In other words, man, our our hope is not in a person, right? Our hope is not in a leader. Our hope is not in a government or in a system or in a cure. Our hope is not in a medicine, but it's in an all-powerful, ever-present, all-knowing God who spoke and our universe came into existence. Our hope is in God. And the prophet Isaiah, he said in the Old Testament, he said, man, those those whose hope is in the Lord, they will renew their strength right? They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Man, our hope is in God. And those who know God's name, man, they know God intimately, right? They know Him intimately, those who trust in Him. You can put your faith in God. 
Because God, who are you? Scripture says, God, you're my strength. God, you are my strength. God, you are always faithful. You are always faithful. God, when, when everything else seems hopeless, God, you're my hope. You're my hope. And the psalmist, he told us some other characteristics and qualities of God. And this one might be my favorite, Psalm 75, verse 1. He says, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. We give thanks to you because why? You are. We give thanks to you because you are near. We give thanks to you because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. I'm thankful for a God who's always near. Aren't you thankful for a God who's always close? He's always near. James says in the New Testament, man, whenever you draw near to God, Whenever you come after God, whenever you go seeking for God, anytime you're hurting, anytime you're afraid, anytime you feel unsettled, anytime you feel unsure, man, anytime you ever draw near to God, James says, he always draws near to you. He always draws near to you. He will always, 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 always draw near to you. Every time you seek him, every time you go after him, man, he's going to draw near. He's going to draw near to you. You know Why? Because God is not some far off, distant, uninvolved God that's somewhere off in the cosmos, right? He is loving and caring and compassionate and he's always near. And the Bible says that he will never leave you or forsake you. And that's my God. That's the God I serve, man. My God is always with me. My God is always comforting me. My God is always strengthening me. My God is always giving me hope, always drawing me near. So what do you call God? What do you call God? Because, man, what you call Him, it directly reflects how well you know Him. What you call God directly reflects how well you know Him. But those who know His name, they trust in Him. They trust in Him. They trust His character. They trust His nature. David says in Psalm 86, verse 5, Who is God? He said, Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are so good. Who is God? God is so good. Who is God? God is so good. He is so good. And he's also so ready to forgive. God is so ready to forgive because he's so full of unfailing love. He is so full of unfailing love for all who ask for his help. So who is God? Man, God is so good and God is so ready to forgive and God is so full of unfailing love for all those who ask for your help. Don't you love that? Man, God isn't just good, but he's so good. God isn't just good, but he's so good. God is good. He's always good. And some of us, man, we've heard the saying, God is good all the time and all the time, God is good. You know why we say that? Because he is all the time, God is good. Every single day, God is good. He's always good. All the time, God is good. God is good when the economy is strong, and God is good when it's failing, right? God is good when you have a job, and God is good when you don't have a job. God is good when you're healthy, and God is still good and faithful even when you're not. Man, He's good, but He's not just good. He's so good. And I want you to know the goodness of God because who is God? Man, He's so good. He's so good. And God isn't just ready to forgive, but the scripture says that he's so ready. God is so ready. And that's really good news for some of us because, man, we need forgiving. We need forgiving. And maybe, man, you've let yourself down. Maybe you dropped the ball and maybe you let God down. Maybe, maybe something happened and you gave in, right? You gave up. You let your faith go. And maybe Maybe it was for a moment and maybe for you, maybe it was for years, right? Maybe you let your faith go for some time and you just, you feel the weight of your sin. You feel the weight of your sin. And man, scripture teaches us that if we confess our sins to God, our God is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God isn't just ready to forgive, but he's so ready. God is so ready and God is not just loving, but he's so loving, because that's who he is. Love isn't just something that God does. Love isn't just something that God shows, but it's who he is. 
It's a part of His very nature. And here's what I love about God. It's that there's nothing that you can do to get Him to love you more or less because He doesn't love us based upon our performance. God doesn't love us based upon how well we do with this or how well we do with that, but He loves us because that's who God is. It's who He is. It's just who He is. God is love, and so He loves. But what do you call God? What do you call God? God. You're my strength. You know who God is to me? God, you're always faithful. God, you're my hope. God, you're always near. God, you're so good. You're so ready to forgive. You're so loving. Man, what do you call God? What do you call God? Because what you call Him, it's a direct reflection of what you know about Him. It tells us what you know. Man, the last psalm we're going to look at today, it's actually the very last you are statement in Psalms. It's the very last one in all the book of Psalms. And David says this in Psalm 118, verse 28 and 29. And he says this, who are you? And David says this about God. He says, you are my God. You are my God. You are my God. And because you are my God, I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you and give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his faithful love endures forever. You're my God. You're my God. Can you say that? Can you say that this morning? Is that your story? Is that your profession? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel anxious? Are you hurting? Do you feel afraid, man? Call out on God as if he were your God. Call out on him. Cry to him, man. If you're hurting today, just tell him that you're hurting. Tell him that you're broken. Tell him that you're mad. Tell him that you've been blaming him. Unload on him, man. I promise you that the God of the universe, the God who created it all, he can handle it. I believe with all my heart, man, if you're hurting today, you can tell him that you're hurting. I am completely and utterly convinced that God would rather tell you uh, something, God would rather have you tell him or pray to him something in your anger than he would have you uh, say nothing at all. God wants to hear your voice, he wants to know you. Unload on him, man. If, if you're in a relationship with God, if he's already your God, man, just tell him what's on your heart. Tell him how you feel, right? Tell him, tell him what you're going through, man. If you're afraid, cry out, right? If you're afraid, man, let it go. The Bible tells us, cast all your cares on him. Why? Because he cares about us. Cast all your cares on God because why? He cares about us, man. He cares. He cares. So how do you trust in God? How do you trust in God? Like, how do you do it when everything seems so unstable? How do you do it when, when, when you feel so alone? When you feel anxious? When you feel afraid? Man, those who know His name, they find it so much easier to trust in Him. They find it so much easier to trust His heart. And what we call someone, man, it tells us so much about the relationship. It tells us so much about the relationship and what we call God. It tells us what we believe about God. It tells us what we believe about God. So Christian, Jesus follower, what do you call God when you get to know Him? Right? What do you call Him when you get to know Him? Well, the moment I feel weak, man, I say, God, you're my strength. When the world is unstable, we say, man, God, you are always faithful, right? Whenever you feel anxious or unsure or afraid, you say, God, you are my hope. That's who you are. When you feel isolated or alone or hurting, you say, God, you are always near. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. When you mess up, when you fail, when you fall short, when you hurt others, man, when you sin against God, listen to me, God is not just good. But he's so good. And God's not just ready to forget, but he's so ready to forgive. And he's not just loving, but God is so full of unfailing love for anyone who calls on his name because that's who God is. He is love. And so he sent his son Jesus to give his life, to reveal his heart for the world. And God didn't just shout his love from heaven, but he came down and he showed his love on earth. And what if, in the middle of a time, when you're hurting, 
and you feel so low, man, what if, what if this is the moment you were born to look up? What if this is the moment that you need to look up? And maybe not to talk to the big guy in the sky, but maybe it's to talk to a faithful and loving and forgiving God who is near. Because if you know him like that, then he's not someone else's God, but you could say, he's my God. He's my God. Because those who know his name, they trust his heart. Those who, those who know his name, they, they trust his heart. And as we get ready to pray today, man, I realize that there are those of you that are watching and maybe this isn't normal for you, but we're not living in a normal time and you recognize, man, you need something different. You've tried everything else. You know you have and you need something different. And maybe you've been running around this world searching high and low for some security. And what you didn't realize is it's not physical security that you need, but you've been searching for spiritual security. What I want to do is tell you about someone named Jesus. You want to know who he is, man? He's the son of God. And he's perfect in every way. And he came down from heaven to shed innocent blood on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And he gave up his life, his perfect life, for you and for me. And our God, who is so good and so faithful, he raised him up three days later from the dead so that anyone, and this includes you, anyone who calls on the name that is above every name, anybody who calls on the name of Jesus, man, your sins would be forgiven and God would start to make you completely new. Because God, he's not just good, but he's so good. And he's not just ready to forgive you, but he's so ready to forgive you. And he's not just loving, but he's so loving. And, and he's loving you at this very moment. And so, man, wherever you're watching, there are those of you who would recognize, man, he may be somebody else's God. He may be my parents' God or my grandmother's God or, or my friend's God, but he's not, just my, he's, he's not yet my God. He hasn't become my God yet, man. I want to know him. I want to know this God. And so what we're going to do, man, today, all we're going to do is we're just going to turn away from our sin, our old life, and we're going to turn to Jesus. We're going to call on his name, the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. And when you call on that name, man, God's going to hear your prayers and he's going to forgive your sins. And in that moment, man, I want you to know that everything up to now, man, your past, it's gone. It's thrown away. The Bible says that he casts our sin as far as the east is from the west. That's eternal. It just goes forever. It just keeps going, right? And in that moment, your past is gone. And God begins making all things new in your life because he starts to transform us from the inside out, right? He starts to make us this, this new creation. And so, man, if that's you, if that's what you want, if you're saying, oh, I'm lonely, I'm anxious, I'm afraid, I'm fearful, I'm, I'm going through it, man, I, I need this God, I need this strength, I need this faithfulness you speak of. Man, I just, I want to know Jesus. If that's you this morning, I want you to pray with me. I'm going to almost like vows, man, I'm going to say a line and just let you repeat after me. I don't know what you like, if you want to hit your knees or if you want to stand up and lift your hands or if you want to lay down, I don't know what, what your style of prayer is, what you like to do, but I want you to get yourself into a posture of prayer. You could sit down, just put your head down or watch the screen for the words. But if that's you this morning and you want to accept Jesus into your life, you want to know this God, man, just repeat after me. I want to introduce you. Pray from the heart. You ready? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, forgive me for my sins. Jesus, today I put my trust in you. Would you be my savior? I want to know your goodness, God and your grace, and your love, and mercy. Fill me with your spirit, so I can trust in you, so I can live for you, and so I can be a faith spreader, and a love giver, and a hope dealer, all the days of my life, reflecting your love everywhere I go. Today, I put my faith in you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Connect Church, celebrate with all the angels in heaven because there is a party taking place right now and it is something that needs to be celebrated.
Man, we love you, and we are so thankful for all God's doing in the kingdom, even through this crazy season. Hey, family, friends, people who are tuning in for the first time, we are so excited that you chose to spend your Sunday morning with us. We hope that the message encouraged your spirit and that it was everything you needed to grow closer to God. We hope that you would join us again, so don't forget to click the subscribe button below. And if you accepted Christ into your life, we want to know. So in the About section below, you can email D Johnson at connectchurchla.com. We would love to hear that story. And if you are specifically in the Auburn, Maine area, and you accepted Christ into your life, and you do not have revival, please let us know that too. We would love to connect with you and equip you with a Bible so that you can have a strong and healthy relationship with Jesus. We hope you enjoyed yourselves today, and we can't wait for you to join us again next week.